Hello there Pixel Pushers, it's Sadiq Hussain here from the uh, Pixel Pushers YouTube channel uh, and of course uh, everything about uh, pushing pixels is about manipulation, it's about manipulating uh, the pixels uh, thousands and millions of times in a given image so that we can alter it, we can adjust it, we can uh, um, uh, be creative with it, we can do all sorts of things with it. But essentially all we're changing is the brightness of a pixel, uh, the hue uh, of a pixel, i.e. the colour of it, or the saturation of it. So it's brightness, hue and saturation. And conveniently, of course, that's one of the adjustment um, uh, layers that we can use in Affinity Photo. Uh, but before we get on to that, so I've had a query from a viewer following the recent uh, videos that we've made and uploaded with regards to the grad uh, gradient tool. And the question was, can you add a mask to the gradient tool? And of course, the short answer is yes. Um, but let me just go through with you quickly on this particular image. So applying a mask so that you are blocking off the gradient and multiple gradients in a given photograph uh, in the editing process in the pixing the push pix pushing the pixels about in an image. Sorry, yeah, got my tongue tied there. Um, so first of all, this is a, a raw image from the Canon camera uh, that I use uh, mainly. And uh, so I'm just going to develop it. So um, this isn't part of this particular tutorial, but let's just click on some of the basic um, uh, develop options just so we can adjust the image. So this is non-destructive editing because it's a raw image. It's only when we press the develop in the top left-hand corner do we um, does it become a, a pixel layer and uh, something that will enable to us to save it as a JPEG or a TIFF if we want to. Okay, so let's just look at what we want to do. I uh, want to make that a bit warmer. It was in the summer, so, so it should be a bit warmer. Uh, and I think that's all we, we need to do as far as develop. Just press develop in the top left. As you, if you remember, in Affinity Photo, you will have what we call personas. And those are the five personas at the top. I've covered this already, uh, and I'll put a link in the description so you can check that video out. Uh, but of course, um, uh, uh, it's it's a given that uh, Affinity Photo has um, uh, it's a slightly different way of organizing its tools and editing functions. And what it chooses to do is to cho is to put them into five categories or five personas, of which we've got the main one, which is the editor. Uh, we've got this third one, which is the develop persona, which is all about developing raw files ready for further editing. You've got the liquify persona, which is pushing pixels about. Um, we haven't done a, a huge amount on that yet yeah, but we will be covering that. Uh, tone mapping, which is all about exposure and high dynamic range, so we can fix the, um, the exposure range within an image. For example, these dark areas in the trees, that would be a good example, or the shadow areas here. Uh, or you can leave them as they are very contrasty. And there's a whole range of tutorials on that. And then finally, you've got the export persona. Now, I personally don't use the export persona very often because you don't actually need to for 99% of your everyday exporting options. You just go to file and the export option in the menu as we do, and that's sufficient for most. But there are some uh, export uh, um uh, sort of options that you will need the export persona for and again we will be covering that in due course so if you want me to cover that earlier sooner then do let me know in the comments and then of course I can bump that up in the schedule of uh, videos that we're producing here on the on the channel okay so we're looking at um, as I said we had a, a viewer put a comment which is very much appreciated and asking about a masking of um, uh, gradient layers or gradients um, using the gradient tool. In short, almost any layer can have a, a mask applied to it. And remember, a mask is just the ability to block a given effect in a given part of an image or tone it down or change the, the nature of it. Okay, so first of all, let's apply a couple of um, 
uh, uh, graduated filters on here. This lends itself really well because we've got a really deep blue sky, enough to put a graduated filter there on a new layer, but I don't want it to actually affect the tree or the, the tower of the um, uh, of the church, then that means I could block that effect off. So that would be a, a good way of using this particular tutorial to demonstrate that. So let's go to the uh, graduation tool. But before we do that, we need a new pixel layer. So bottom right on the layers palette, new pixel layer, and that's where we're applying the graduated tool. And initially just applied, don't worry about positioning or anything just yet, apply it. Uh, and then, of course, you, what you want to do is change the blend modes between that graduated layer and the image below it. So that it has, actually has an effect. So if you go down to um, find the option that really gives you a, a good effect. And you want something like overlay or soft light. Okay, let's let's do soft light. Zoom out a little bit so we can position this. And really what we're looking at is that it's darker in the bottom right and lighter at the top. Okay, now that's not what we want. So we actually want to reverse that because typically if you put a graduated mask or a graduated filter as you would on a camera ready for a, a landscape photograph, it would be darker at the top and fade down. But we can quickly reverse that by either going into the graduated um uh, tool uh, menu here uh, but you can just click it here as well so there's a um uh, any uh, uh, sorry a reverse option there and there's a reverse option there okay reverse gradient so if i just press that so that's reversed it in that the blacks at the top and the whites near the bottom okay so this is a graduated filter of just black and white okay now i don't want it to creep over the church necessarily so i want to leave it about there okay and i want it to be quite deep it's good i can move that away so it sort of only affects this part here but if it does affect the church tower or certainly the tree here, what we can do is mask it out, as uh, the viewer has asked about. So let's do that then. So now that we've done that, we, we can just add, to, we've got that layer selected. We've got the mask option here at the bottom of the layers palette. So click on mask layer. So that automatically applies a mask to that particular layer. Okay, so it means that as soon as we use the brush tool, and we brush with black. Black blocks, remember, white reveals. Okay, so if I was to... Okay, so like I said, we've, we've got the mask uh, uh, created there. And uh, if we, we click, we've clicked on the, the brush tool, uh, which is what we want. Uh, when, we're, when we're painting with black or painting with white, we reveal uh, uh, what's underneath. So I'm painting with black to block out the effect. Now, if I was to do that now here, can you see that what we're actually doing is revealing the original value of the image, the original value of the pixels underneath? So it's like we haven't put a graduated um, uh, uh, filter on it at all uh, on that new layer. We're blocking it. Now, we don't want to block it there. So let me just reverse that, go back. What, what I want to do is to block it just on the church there. Okay, so I'm just going to reduce the size of the brush there. So we don't want that filter to have an effect on the church. So we'll bring the church back to where it was. You remember it fades away as it goes further down. And of course, if we don't like this effect, we can paint with white because painting with white reveals the, um, uh, the effect of the graduated filter. Okay, so let's just move this image over here. And really what I'm trying to do is to bring back the original values of this image in a given area by blocking out the effect of the graduated filter. Now, actually, I quite like that tree to be quite light. So I'm just going to switch colors just by clicking on that arrow. It's a quick way of switching colors. And I do want to reveal 
the tree to be um, slightly lighter because that graduated filter remember went from dark to light so further down the image is making the image lighter um, and further up the image is making it darker so I can choose which bits to have the filter apply to and which bits I don't so clearly you'd take a bit more care in this you don't want to go over onto the church building because as I said that we want to make darker I'm happy to have this to be dark uh, but maybe not up here so maybe I can lighten that up as well okay it'll only be subtle because the there is a graduated filter applied throughout here and it just makes that tree it was already dark so I'm just going to make it a little bit brighter or reveal it to back to where it was I don't want to go over the, the sky I'm quite happy to leave that where it is plus I want to make that tree just a little bit lighter um, there won't be a lot in it because the original image was quite dark there in the first place okay but I don't want it to go even darker like a silhouette okay so let's just center that image up remember command and zero or control and zero on the windows machine centers up your image into in your workspace uh, very very quickly so now we've we've applied a graduated filter let's just delete that that's the original image applied a graduated filter and then added a mask remove the mask see the church is quite bright um, and but i quite like the detail in the uh, in the church so i'm masking out the effect of the graduated filter which went from dark to light so it's lightening it down here and the rest of it i'm quite happy with so that's one filter let's apply another filter uh, so we want a new layer so select new layer at the top always put each new graduated filter on a new layer go back to the graduate uh, gradient tool and again i'm just going to draw it out remember this graduated filter isn't a uh, different colors this is just a, a an overlay to make an image darker or or lighter and um, and let me just change the blend modes here typically what you would do with uh, um, an ND filter or a graduated filter on the end of your um, camera a lens so let's go back to soft light now I want this to apply only in the bottom right corner but which way do I want it to go do I want it to go from dark to, to light or light to dark so really position it where you want it to first say so about there and then change where the filter works so I'm going to say about here and uh, then do a reverse and see is that better no definitely not so that that is definitely what we want but it is affecting this top image too much okay so what i might do is change that black to a lighter gray so it doesn't have such an effect so if i just move that can you see it's affecting that image now so i just want to bring it down a little bit say about there so what I've done essentially is change this uh, uh, gradient from white to a light gray a particular uh, gray value and I'm doing it by eye and there's no mathematics behind this just aesthetic what looks good for the image now that I've done that I want to uh, apply a mask to that so again click down here apply a mask and that's got a mask to it so highlight the mask layer then click on the the brush tool because you now want to brush out the effect in a given area so i'm just going to use a big broad brush stroke and again black blocks so make sure the color that the brush is painting with on the mask is uh, black and as soon as you hover your your brush over it it'll give you a little preview that what the image is going to be like i.e what's it going to reveal what was underneath it below this set of layers here i.e the original image and that first um, uh, gr uh, gradient that we put on and I want to make this a bit darker because I think it's too light okay 
because that's where we've applied this new gradient. I just want to bring that back. I'm not touching further up at all because the further up it was fine. Okay. And that's it. So now we've got two gradients, both of them with a mask and both of them with certain areas blocked off. Okay. And again, if I disable this gradient, let's just make that a bit bigger. Disable that gradient. And it's very subtle, so it's basically making the, the sky a little bit darker without it affecting the, the bottom of the image because on the bottom of the image I've blocked out the effect using the mask. And the the second, the sorry, the first gradient, that's the original image. Certainly that's too uniform, but I think this is a, a better, pleasing, more balanced image because we've chosen what to make a little bit more contrasty and darker. We've chosen what to keep the same, like the church, or what to lighten uh, at the bottom. So that's just a quick example on one image of how you can use not just the gradient tool to add a, a particular um, a tint to a particular part of an image or a gradient to it, to make it darker or lighter or give it a, a, a colored gradient, uh, but also as we did with the lettering, with the uh, previous video again I'll link to it in the um, in the description of this video and also at the end uh, and you can go and check that out which was more uh, more more uh, obvious uh, gradients going from something like red to, to white with yellow and orange in between but this of course isn't that this is, we're not making a poster we're not making pop art what we're doing is subtly enhancing uh, an image not by using one of the um, adjustment layers, but, but, uh, but by using a gradient tool combined with uh, masks to mask off a particular part uh, of, of the image. So I hope you find that useful. And um, like I said, do leave any comments, do subscribe if you haven't already done so. It really helps me, it helps the channel. It keeps me motivated to make more videos. I know there are plenty of people who are watching them and getting more and more subscribers, which is excellent. And um, so really want to push this uh, forward, but only on the basis of what uh, individuals want me to cover. There's loads more we can do. As I said, uh, version two is out of the Affinity Program Suite, and we haven't even looked at that yet. So we'll be um, uh, looking at that. I've been preparing some videos in the last few weeks. And of course, if anybody's interested in getting version two, now's the time to get it. They still the 40% offer. Again, I'll put a link in the description straight to the Affinity website. Um, I'm not sponsored by them. It's, uh, you know, I'm not an advocate for them in the sense that, that they haven't asked me to do anything. I'm saying this off my own back because I use it. I advocate it and I think it's excellent as in, I wouldn't be uh, making all these videos about the software. But of course, when you've got 40% off, then it's well worth buying. And now's the time to do it. I believe it's up until the 25th of January. So there's uh, another week or so, perhaps a bit longer, 10 days. Uh, depends on when you watch this video, of course. So if you are watching it now, then do act quickly if you haven't got version two. And it's well worth thinking about the full bundle if you've got an iPad or if you're thinking about getting an iPad or if one of you in your household has got a Mac and one's got a Windows, the bundle is the better option because it's far better value for money. Even if you think, well, I'm not going to need Affinity Designer or Affinity Publisher, it's still a good deal. Um, that's certainly what I went for. So I would seriously consider that. If not, just the Affinity Photo at the reduced price is well worth it. And that's the only amount that you'll need to spend on the software. You'll get all full updates as far as I know certainly by the past years uh, is concerned um, for the next <coughs> excuse me for the next I would say four to five years if not longer so if you um, portion that out that's well worth really good investment so get that if you haven't got it we will be doing videos covering that so thanks for watching I uh, hope to see you again in the next video uh, like I said please comment please like and uh, subscribe if you haven't already done so. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.